Hot Six cast by Calderon Wolf. Top right of the map, we have the punching bag of Group A today. It's sad, he's such a great player, but for some reason today is not his day. It's the Terran player for Fnatic. It is... Fnatic alive! He's not really alive today. Today he's pretty much dead, which is, as I already said, it's kind of a sad story. He's out of Code S. He will play in Code A. The question is, will he go down without winning a single map, or is he able to uh, make his opponent struggle? To the bottom left, cross position on Whirlwind. We have the TSL Zerg. It is... TSL Hyun. Alive just not on top of this game today. Seems to be suffering a little bit uh, against the multitasking of his opponents. Yeah, Hyun on the other hand, the opposite is true for him. He's on fire right now. Call him butter, cause he's on a roll. Going for the hatch first, of course, no question about it. And Alive is starting with a 14cc. Yep, I can't remember the last time I saw someone go for a non 14cc uh, on this map. In this matchup, at least he checks. I don't know what he was checking for over there, but he now drops the hatch or the uh, command center. Now on this map, Terran players have figured out how to play late game. Some people even mech on this map, in fact. Yeah. Uh, but with the with the aggressive play that we've seen from Terrans already on this map, it just goes to show that even though the map is big, as long as you avoid the creep and you find the right angles of attack, you can put a lot of pressure on. But at the same time, if you play for your own late game, if you're strong at the late game, if you're good at doing drops, you're good at your marine splits, you make the right composition, you can do it a live stream now and go for a command star first and play for that late game. MMA was using mech on this map, MVP in the final against the life also used mech on against the Zerg player. So at this point we have just the expansion being built, the scout for Hyun is there, he has his pool already started and it, yeah, what is he gonna do? Will we see once again this mid game which is centered around Zergling, Baneling and Muralisk aggression? Will he mix it up a little bit? This is a huge map and you can go for Brood Lords, but it's always a little bit dangerous. If you wanna go for Brood Lords, you usually try to hit a timing so that you ten can take down your opponent in one big fight. Because if you are ending up in a scenario where your opponent can just drop around you, can circumvent your army, it's really dangerous as Brood Lords are just so slow. So you can't really have this task force that is always able to defend your bases when there are drops or runbys, especially with, uh, with Hellions or Marine drops. So let's see what exactly Hyun is up to. By the way, Hyun saw the gas of Alive. He's taken his own gas and he pulls out all but one. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's uh, done with the aggression, but he knows his opponent has a factory really quick. So, he, it's a slight risk by life, because most players would go for the second barracks, but he went for gas instead. And this is something that Kian knows about, so he's like, okay, well not only do you have the economy, but also you have the ability to put a little bit of pressure on with your Hellions. I already have my speed on the way though, that was the build that I chose. Hyun, and he's put all back in gas. Hyun is currently really confident in this matchup. Takes down the SCB here, his speed is halfway done, gets a few Zerglings. Let's have a quick look at his Harvest account, he's looking at 24 right now. Yeah, and I think he may be aggressive with the gas he's still mining right now. He hasn't taken a third base. If he goes for lifestyle here, where he's just getting a lot of Zerglings and tries to pressure this natural, this is something that he could do. He's most likely not going to do it, especially with him now starting a lot of drones. But if he times this I with speed, the that's the Roach yeah. And looking at Second the gas. numbers again, he could actually just go again, once again, for a composition with Roach Baneling. Yeah, he will. He's going to get the Baneling Nest right after this, I feel. I think this is really what he's going to do. He's already got the Lings out on the base. Everything he's done is really set up for this, but Alive will see no third hatchery. That's what he's checking for with his SV right now. It's going to tip him off a little bit. Banshees are pretty helpful at defending a push like this, but Siege Tanks are obviously what you really want to have. You and he's not going to have them. Marauders or Siege Tanks, both of them. It's actually one thing, I mentioned it earlier already when we had the same strategy. It's a thing that a lot of Terrans do these days, that they build just one of their uh, marauders just to have something with banshees you can also defend against it but the problem is during that time you will most likely lose quite a lot and currently he's just waiting for the lava he doesn't have the lava as soon as those spot ah, okay there they are 10 and there's also the uh, baneling nest as expected denying scouting information is crucial you want to make sure that your opponent does not know what's coming because if he knows early on what you have in mind then he can't just build additional bunkers wall get marauders 
Yeah, right now, actually, Alive is making a bunker, but it's at his natural, not on the high ground. That's and not it's, gonna help. It's not, it's, exactly, it's not gonna be too helpful. It's not even next to walls, so it's gonna be easily surrounded and killed or just busted through by Banelings. The Banshees are not gonna be too useful either. Yeah, they do some extra DPS, but with this many Roaches, it's gonna take forever to kill those. He's now just making lanes to fall. And this is a, a big Roach attack. This is 10 Roaches coming out. This is not just six or seven. This is a massive attack. But he saw it. No. He saw it and he's building he's building a siege tank now. So with two banshees, the sea and the siege tank, he can defend against this. It's all a matter of micro. If you for example target down the banelings early on, then this definitely helps you a lot and you put a lot of this a lot of this danger away from you. But you need to take the key units out because your opponent will definitely kill something. The question is how much? Yeah, how much indeed. Ling is running across the map now. He's gotta wait for those banelings to come through. He wants to to guard them with Roach at the front. We've seen a lot of players mess this up. Lose their Banelings to Hellions, but not Hyun. He's not going to let it happen. Targets down that bunker. It's going to be salvaged, but no way it's not going to finish in time. Moves and up here. here. We go. Breaks through. Tries to supply blocks alive immediately. The next bunker is also dead. A lot of bunkers actually finished, but now Hyun is in the main base of his opponent. We currently have still a Harvest account lead for Hyun, but Alive didn't lose too many of his units just yet. The Banshee doing a great job. He needs to get rid of the Siege Tank, though. The Zerglings running into the main base, and there is no wall for Alive. He did not rebuild the Supply Depot, and that's why the Siege Tank is going to die here. Hyun is losing a lot with the Banshee that is yeah. currently taking down his workers at the bottom left, though. I think Hyun is in a really, uh, he's in a lot of trouble here because he's not going to do much more with these Roaches. There's nothing to stop the Banshee at home. He's just now getting an Evolution Chamber, and he has no third base. He made a few drones here, but this is a big problem for him. He doesn't even have his bases connected by Creep right now. The Queen is gone, and this Banshee is having a field day here. 37 Harvesters, 36 against 37. The Harvester count killed. Alive took down 17. Hyun only killed 10 SCVs. This defense for Alive is really something. This there, is were, there were cross positions on this map, you know? He did this build against on the biggest map in the pool. Cross positions. And it still looked like it could be strong, but it just didn't do enough because Alive saw everything with the Hellions. He made so many bunkers. There weren't a lot of units to put inside of them, but he blew up Banelings on top of them anyways, and so he lost so many Banelings, didn't connect with those SCVs. The big problem is that the Banshee can really take down the key units. You can't defend against it. The Siege Tank wasn't a good spot where at first those Roaches could not really connect. So that was really well defended by Alive. And at this point in time, it looks like Hyun might lose this game. There are too many Banshees and they are everywhere. They are taking down Harvester after Harvester. As you can see, 32 drones, that's all that he's got. 22 have been killed. The third base is being pressured. Yes, the Queens will be able to defend it, but this is just brutal. Alive takes down so much. He is not even losing the Banshee here. Close it just in time. And Hyun, look at how many harvesters he loses. He can't mine from these patches to the right side of the middle line. The lair is almost done, which will finally allow Hyun to clean this up. But the question is, is it too much already? The Queen's now off creep. He can target them down, and he will, one by one. This one is not the one that has the most transfuse, so he should transfuse. There he goes. Yeah, a bit of a misstep. Should have transfused another queen, but uh, uh, sorry, target, target another the hatchery. Queen. Yeah, he can still target the hatchery. And the evolution chamber here may go down if he targets it. And don't forget about what uh, Life is doing in the main base. He's building SCPs, he's getting more factories, blue flame. And these are all things that Jan most likely will not be able to defend against. Four factories on the way for Alive. And he's going to target the hatch down now with two Banshees, he will get it. There's nothing to stop him. He doesn't have a queen to transfuse. Gets out. Alive has done so much damage on the scan. The worker count now 51 to 43. But, the, yeah, it's only five workers difference now at 58, or excuse me, 48 to 53 now. But with all the army that uh, Hyun is going to be facing, with all the production that Alive just made, I don't think he's going to be able to stop uh, enough Hellions. Double upgrades coming out from those armories now. For Hyun, this is really tough. If Hyun loses here, then he could later on end up in a lot of tie situations. Uh, he has to fight JYP later on. And uh, the big thing would be if Hyun loses to JYP, then suddenly he's in a very, very awkward situation. Then he has to uh, hope for his opponents to take down to take down JYP or uh, to just for this tie situation to occur where JYP doesn't have a chance anymore. Maybe even a three-way tie. But this is really awkward. Hyun is certainly feeling the pressure now. He's 35 supply behind his opponent. Three Thors are being built. Ah, Hyun does not have the resources he needs to build uh, enough roaches, I feel, to stop uh, Alive's army. I mean, Alive is going to have a timing if, if he wants to hit it, because 
It was mech, oftentimes players will wait until max, but if he realizes, which it, because he's got these banshees to see exactly what's going on, if he realizes the opportunity he has, I think he'll just take it. Banshee does get taken out, but he's got all the information in the world right now. We still have Alive with more Harvesters and the Mules. Yep. The Roaches are being built. All these upgrades, they're so important for Hyun right now, but the supply, 50. Yep. Right now, Hyun basically can't... I mean, it, Alive could attack with more Thors than there are Roaches. Yeah. That could actually happen. I don't think it will, because he's making siege tanks right now instead, because that's a smart choice considering what he scouted, but... You know, he has a third base, he's now going across the map with uh, Blue Flame Hellions. It will be so difficult for Jan to hold this. It is kind of impossible. At this point, if Alive does not take this game, then I would say he is maybe sick. He's probably gonna die soon, because like a fever, I don't know. He's gonna have to scan here if he wants these drones. Actually, oh. attacks the spore oh instead. Oh my god! Wow. That is brutal. Oh wow! So many taken out there. Now 20 workers down. He killed 44 workers in total over the duration of this game. 44. Eight infestors now. Will the infestors change something here? A 40 supply lead for alive. All these production structures. Three bases. A lot more harvesters. He's making six turrets right now. Hyun needs time. And I don't think that Alive is willing to give him the time that he needs to uh, to rebuild his army, to get into this position. I don't think so. He's just going to move out. He he knows that he's got this opportunity. He's hesitating a little bit here. He's got a group of Hellions going around the right side, but I think he could just attack straight up with his army and win. Well, look at the upgrades. Plus yeah, I know. two plus two now coming up. It's for insane. mech. For mech. We don't even talk about bio here. And this Banshee controls the Watchtower. Nice burrow there, I like that. Yeah, a cute burrow. Here comes the Hellion Force though, even drones trying to prevent. A good bungle here. Yeah. Now they look a little bit silly, it's basically like the Union Force Dragon Ball. <laughs> a few drones going down regardless though. Imagine if the Thors were with that and he just fought. That would have been insane. I mean, you can fungle a Thor, but you're going to lose your investors to the siege tanks or to the Thors if you get too close. This Thor cone is getting out of control. He has six, he's getting in another two. He will be on eight Thors already on plus two, plus two upgrades. Sixteen drones for Hyun. He's now, okay, I have to take a risk right now. I need to get a lot of roaches. He has those macro hatches, therefore he is in a position where he can, where he has the lava. If he, if he saves all the infestors, this now is the push that he has to defend against. And he needs so much more in order to pull it off. The army supply is now 120 against 46. That was the saddest overseer I've ever seen. It's it's 2 2. He's hitting with that timing where his 2 2 finishes up, and he knows he's got a way bigger army than his opponent. Crippling the army supply right now. Tanks leading the charge. He doesn't want to fungle them individually. He's got no army. The, you know, Hyun is so dead, he's already starting to smell. The Roach count is, like I said, less than the Thor count, man. This he's, is actually happening. He's rotting away here. He's building Zerglings, but they are Blue Flame Hellions. It, it, you could just cannot dis uh, recover. From a disadvantage that huge, you cannot recover if your opponent is not screwing up completely. And Alive isn't. Alive is playing the best game that he played today. 200 supply against 120. Alive is completely going crazy here. There is no chance for Hyun. Yeah, the siege tanks just demolishing the investors. The Thors take out those investor turrets. No problem. And Hyun will have GG. GG, this is it. Alive takes his first win today. And Hyun is now on 3-1. Alive takes out the headsets and says, you know what, I did not get all killed by this group. Hyun is not happy. Not at all. Nope. He's looking he at this so and close. Like, uh, that shouldn't have happened. He went for a very uh, all-in attack, a ground attack on cross positions on the biggest map in the entire pool. And it still looked decent, but at the end of the day, he wasn't able to do enough damage. His banelings connected mostly on bunkers that were empty. And there's Alive and his coach. And now we have Boom Boom against Hack. Another Zerg versus Terran. And yeah, Boom Boom still has a chance here, guys. He's down 1 2, yeah, but still, he has a chance. He has to fight Alive later on. And now he has to face Hack. If Hack wins this now, he will be on 3 1, exactly the same score that Hyun has. And then the game between Hack and MMA will already determine whether Hack advances to uh, uh, Codes or not. Yep.
The music is changing here as things are getting real. Things yep. are super serious right now. Boom, boom, up against Hack. The map. It is going to be Bristol City. Yep, and Bristol City is the next map, which is, of course, a bit of an advantage for our Zerg player here, for Boom Boom. Not part of the fine team anymore. This is tense right now. Hax gotta win this. He'll take his 3 1. And if Boom Boom loses, he's gonna be 1 and 3. Totally out. This is his last leg here. Yep. And what's also true is that this group is just insane. It's insane. I'm looking at I'm looking at the maps, I'm trying to calculate for Boom Boom and for Hack what happens if he loses now, if he wins, then in the next match is coming up with MMA. This is crazy. Every player here can still advance except for life. Yep. Every single one of them. The game is loading, guys. Abyssal City is the map. We have Star Tail Hack against Boom Boom. Another Zerg versus Terran. Good Zerg map. Can Boom Boom currently teamless keep himself alive here or will Hack knock him down to code A? We're going to start right now. This is the GSL up and down matches. Cast by Caldor Wolf.